Good day, everyone. My name is Maria Konjelska, and you are watching Poland Daily Culture. Since the times of epidemic recalls in us many metaphysical questions, we will talk today about the greatest Polish philosophers of 20th century. With me in the studio is Marek Konjelski, former student of Professor Bogusław Wolniewicz and a Polish philosopher. Thank you for having the courage to be with us. Hello, everyone, and thank you for inviting me to your program. Fever, sore throat, problem of breathing, Fortunately, nothing like this, but it's worthwhile remembering that last plague in Europe resulted in a very outstanding uh, literary output, which is the Cameron by Boccaccio. So we should rather think in these categories that we can bring something fruitful to this world, thanks to epidemic. But still, it uh, is a cause to think in metaphysical uh, in the times of plague. We continue with our series of the greatest philosophers of 20th century. And we, when we talk already about them, we can we point out different ones. So Tatarkiewicz, Kotorbinski, Bogusław Wolniewicz, and Hernan Elzenberg. But we can talk also about a writer who is considered a philosopher, and his name is Stanisław Lem. He is known as a futurologist and a science fiction writer, but why would you classify him as a philosopher? Lem definitely is a, is a philosopher, although he is also a writer. He started off with science fiction uh, in the times when this uh, kind of literature was really based on science. Uh, but still, he encompasses and, and analyzes so many problems uh, in so many fields that it, it's worldwide known, uh, I think, uh, that uh, Philip K. Dick considered Lem as not as an individual but as, as a group of uh, Soviet scientists who are writing essays on many different su subjects, publishing them under the name Stanisław Lem. So uh, he claimed that Lem does not exist. And he even uh, notified FBI about this be because he thought there is some trick behind this. this. This is intentional. No, Lem was one. He was really unique. He was absolutely a, a man of genius in, in many terms. He was a great writer. He was um, a German practitioner by education. Uh, he grew up in, in Lvov. He had some uh, very frightening uh, history, let's say some. He went through very frightening events during German occupation that we learned uh, only recently from his biography. From one hand, Lem is a great writer. I mean, he, he is endowed with literary skills. He can construe the world that brings you in and, and, and grabs your attention from the very first moment. So and here it is worth to mention a few books of Stanisław Lem. So probably for all international audience or also Polish audience, everyone knows uh, his Solaris. Solaris, also Return from the Stars, Eden, uh, Investigation. But there is uh, another part of his output, which are essays analytical essays, and if we look upon his early and late essays, they are by all means philosophical. In many countries, like in Germany or in Russia, Lem is first of all considered as a philosopher and only then as a science fiction writer. Uh, he was the only person who, who was invited uh, to a society that, uh, to, to, to set it, that it was a society uh, to communicate with uh, alien civilizations, so he was the only person who was not an academic and not a Nobel Prize winner. Uh, Even he, though we all think that he actually deserved a Nobel Prize in literature, and it, it's a shame that he never got it. Yes, I think he deserved it very much. He was proposed many times, he never won a Nobel Prize. Uh, but this is absolutely uh, top literary output in, in, in the world. But coming back to why Lem should be considered as a philosopher, if you remember in the time when we had the Soviet system, 
that the West was competing to. Uh, in the West, there was a type of knowledge, let's say, developed, which was um, futurology and Sovietology was, was a part of futurology. So the thinkers trying to predict the future. And it must be stressed that they all failed. They did not predict anything that happened in the future. They did not predict the collapse of the Soviet system. But there are only two essays, two books, dedicated to this type of considerations, which is very similar to the situation when Bacon in, in the Middle Ages wrote about what we can develop in the future. And these books are Dialogues and Summa Technology by Stanislav Lam. So if you consider this, this he predicted virtual reality, uh, he predicted internet, uh, he predicted uh, genetics and biotechnology, uh, and even more, I mean, not everything that he predicted we have achieved until this very moment. Uh, this is really, this is really puzzling. Uh, his main assumption was that the development of technology is an independent factor in, in the development of civilization, which brings the question, who controls whom? Is it we that control technology or the development of technology is starting controlling us? And the Lam believed that development of, controlology, of, uh, of uh, technology is becoming beyond our control. So this is something very intriguing. And the more we observe how it is going, uh, the, the more you should think that he was right. If you don't know Stanislav Lam, there is no excuse for you because most of his books were translated to English and are worth well known. And if you'd like to predict a little bit the future, maybe he, his books and his um, thoughts are the way to do it. Thank you for watching Poland Daily Culture and keep reading because there are some mysteries of intellect out there.